Hey everybody, Bernie Critic here. So it's been a few days since the My Little Pony movie premiered and I've already seen it two times fully and kind of sneaked into the uh, sneaked into a few of the showings while I was on my job. Uh, so I've kind of gotten a good sense for it. I'm probably going to see it a few more times though. Uh, but I just wanted to, you know, thanks to Fiara and some of the other people trying to prod me into some reactions and reviews, I decided to let you guys know not really with a professional or like a fully scripted review, but just sort of what I liked, what I didn't like. Uh, maybe a little comments about, you know, specific parts that I thought could have been better. So there might be some spoilers around. Uh, I'll try to leave those towards the end. And, you know, if that's the case, then you guys will be able to either skip past it. I'll give you guys a little notification or something. Or we'll see how it kind of goes. So the first thing I want to say is that if you are a fan of My Little Pony, this movie is fantastic. I enjoyed it immensely. I, I had a blast watching it. I know all of the people who went to go see it in theaters had a blast watching it. You know, it's really, really good. It feels like watching this. It, it gives me the same feeling as a season premiere or season finale. Like those big adventures where the status quo is fundamentally altered. And I would really like to see that change. You know, some of the changes are things that are introduced in this episode, or in this episode, movie, kind of continue on into the rest of the franchise. I would definitely like to see that. Probably not going to happen. The only reference we've gotten to any place outside of Equestria is Discord mentioning Abyssinia, which is where Capper is from, if you read the prequel comics. I'll get to that in a, in a little bit. So the first thing I really noticed, I have a list of all of the things. So first thing I noticed was the animation, which if you watched any of the trailers, the animation was the first thing you caught on. I thought it was going to be weird, but it it actually worked. Um, it actually improved a lot. It's very smooth, very seamless. It seems like a much higher quality animation, which is very much appreciated. They also combined it with a lot more 3D graphics, which are kind of hit and miss at points, but not so much that it ruins the experience. You know, what I did like is that every single character, both the main characters and even some of the side characters that get along, all have a moment of awesomeness, something where they're really allowed to like just show why these characters are cool. You know, and a lot of those end up coming in through music because the music is so immensely catchy. Um, you know, the one if you you can listen to the soundtrack online, and I highly recommend it. It's a great soundtrack. I had a lot of fun. Capper's song is great. The "It's Time to Be Awesome" is fantastic. Tempest Shadow, uh, actually one of the coolest songs is Tempest Shadow's villain song, and it actually goes to show that she is one of the coolest villains the show has, the series has ever come up with. I would love to see more about her. Um, well, not more about her, but just see references to her, because she was just a hell of a lot of fun, and I had a blast. Uh, but not everything is positive. Um, there are some problems. There are some big problems. Because, as I said at the beginning, if you are a fan of this series, you will love this movie. If you aren't, you will be totally lost. Um, you know, as a Brony fan, I can say, as the Brony critic, I will say, if you are a fan, watch this movie. You will not be disappointed. But as a film critic myself, I, as a film critic independently, I cannot recommend this to someone who is not familiar with the series. You need to have at least a cursory knowledge of, I'd say, up to season five. You'd have to know something about up to season five at least to kind of fully appreciate what's going on in this movie. And that's a serious problem. This movie should have been an opportunity for the My Little Pony... Uh, the My Little Pony brand to expand out into a larger audience. Most people are familiar with bronies. So if you had allowed this opportunity to kind of push 
you know, push it into that direction where you didn't need to have an extensive knowledge of the universe. You could have a cursory knowledge and, you know, that would be fixed. The only thing I could really think that would have fixed that is if you had an intro sort of similar to the first, the, the one that came at the beginning of the show from episode one, season one. If you had that kind of book-ended intro at the very beginning of this movie to kind of get people introduced to what is this universe, I think that would have actually helped out a lot. And it might have made it a little bit more... It would have helped to ease people in to this franchise. Because, unless you're, again, unless you're a fan, you're not really going to enjoy it. And I'd like to say that that's the only problem, but there are quite a few more. Uh, the Storm King is not much... He has absolutely no presence in this film. He's mentioned a few times, he's seen, and you hear him a few times, and Leif Schreiber does a fantastic job. I love the voice, I love the personality. It's great. He just shows up at, like, the last 15 minutes. He... Tempest Shadow is Zant, where Storm King is Ganondorf. Uh, Twilight Princess reference for all you guys. Tempest Shadow would have been a fantastic villain all on her own. You didn't need the Storm King, but the fact that you had him is fantastic. You just, you needed to build him up. And this movie feels like it really should have been four episodes of the show. Uh, the first episode is the attack of the Storm King's armies. Maybe an introduction as to who the Storm King is. Uh, episode two would have been their journey to Klugtown and meeting Capper, and it ends with them on the pirate ship. The third could have been the pirate ship, and we could have learned more about Tempest, and we could have learned more about the Storm King, about what's going on in there. And then episode four would have been, uh, you know, the hippogriff, you know, the the hippogriffs and the final battle. So these sorts of things would have helped to, like, that's sort of what the feel of this should be. And because of that, it feels very thin. Like, there's not enough time for the Storm King. There's not enough time to really explore Capper, who Tay Diggs does a fantastic job, both in his song and in his character. I like Capper. I'd like to see more of him. You know, uh, Captain Silano is really good, is enjoyable. Uh, the Sea Ponies and the Hippogriffs. And how that works out is its own separate thing. But they're rather interesting as well. But because of the nature of this, because of the nature, the structure of the movie, we don't get enough time to see any of it. We get sort of introductions. If you really want to watch though, or if you really want to get more information, you got to read the prequel comics. That is a problem. You should never in any kind of movie have to read extraneous material to extraneous material to get the to get the most bare bones of the story that is a fundamental problem but it's something my little pony does a lot and i don't like it i really really don't because <laughs> Because we shouldn't have, I shouldn't have to do homework to enjoy a movie. The movie should be able to stand on its own, especially if you're trying to get a larger audience. Or, and anyone trying to expand the brand should be trying to do that. But, you know, despite how rushed it is, it does have fantastic world building. I want to see more of these places. I would love to see in like season in season eight. I'd love to see us maybe explore Klug Town, uh, let's go back to Mount Eris. You know, just explore so many of these places. Like these are fantastic areas to go to. I'm just sad that we had to read book, read a comic book, to truly get more details about it. it it's a it's a missed opportunity, you know. And another big problem is Grubber. You know, Michael Pena does a fine job. Uh, the actor does a great job. It's his voice, it's, it's enjoyable, but it's not really funny. And the reason for that is a, f a critical issue with any kind of any kind of product from the My Little Pony brand. It's trying to balance out its target demographic with its fan base, uh, because both want something entirely different. Grubber exists for the target demographic, um, but 
he's not going to be that interesting to the bronies. They're going to find more interest in Tempest Shadow, in the Storm King, in how the Storm King is resolved. I'll talk about that at the end. Uh, but Grubber just kind of ends up falling flat for me. He could have been more interesting, but really there's no... He's just there as a joking character, and he even get he disappeared. He basically gets... <laughs> He gets literally swallowed up in the third act, and we don't see him again till the credits. It's really weird. Uh, my final issue was that not all of the main six mattered. It, it sort of, it's sort of weird to say, but the only characters with any serious kind of growth or necessary input to the story were Twilight, Rainbow, and Pinky. To a minor degree rarity, but Fluttershy and Applejack, and e even Spike, were basically non-entities in this story, and that's really sad, because there's opportunities where they could have done something. This film really does have sort of a hobbit structure to it. You know, go to one place, have an adventure, meet someone, go to another place, have an adventure, meet someone, have an adventure, go somewhere, meet someone, and then at the end, everybody gets together, all the friends you made throughout the journey, they come in and they help you and they solve the problem. It's built just sort of like The Hobbit. But like the Hobbit film, it couldn't have been done in a single, it really couldn't have been done in a single sitting without feeling really, really stretched or felt really, really rushed. Now, I'm not saying that My Little Pony couldn't have worked as maybe a part one and a part two. Like, that actually would have been rather interesting, but I don't think you could have gotten away with it. I really don't think you could have gotten away with it. So we're stuck with what we got. And with what we got, I enjoyed it. I had fun. I think it could have worked. There are a few things that could have maybe worked out a little bit better, though. Uh, and with this, that's going to be the end of the non spoiler parts. I just kind of want to talk about some of the things that are going to go on in you know, uh, some of the spoilers. And it's mostly going to be about the ending. Okay, so in the end, we have the big battle. And the big battle is okay. I would have liked it if it were maybe a little bit more grandiose. Um, I would have maybe, uh, a role you could have had maybe was, you know, let's have Spike free the other ponies and they lead into a charge or a battle. You know, maybe him and Applejack working together. Uh, maybe, you know, Fluttershy's getting into a battle and the Hippogriffs come in and help out at the last second. Something to make it feel more epic, more final. Like, we just sort of forget that the ponies have actually been captured up to this point. And... I get why they had to. They just kind of, they were running, they were running towards the end, and they needed to kind of end it. But it feels like there was a missed opportunity to give one of these characters something else to do. One of the characters who ended up getting left out, the tw the one of the people who's not Twilight, Rainbow, Pinky, or Rarity, giving one of those the remaining three something to do would have been, I think, a lot better. I think it would have helped feel more worthy of them being there, particularly when some of these characters that got ignored are the ones who tend to be ignored in the show as well. Uh, who knows, maybe in another My Little Pony movie, these characters will get to do something interesting. We can hope. Um, but in that final battle, we get the death of the Storm King, and yes, he does die. They sombra his ass. Oh my god. God. Uh, they literally turn him to stone, and I'm just thinking back to that, uh, to the uh, season two, episode one, where Discord says, I don't turn people to stone. And, you know, Discord being gone is a whole other big issue, and, and it's mostly because he could have completely steamrolled the entire plot. Him and Starlight Glimmer could have both steamrolled the entire plot. We see Starlight Glimmer, but she doesn't do anything. But this film probably was in production long before was probably in production long before season six kind of made her a character or made her a major a major character in the series so you know we'll do we'll we'll deal with what we have to but you know the fact that we had to get rid of them and then I'm just thinking about you know the storm king turning into a rock and then he turning to stone and then he gets shattered like just completely pulverized and we even see him like get pulverized and it is brutal. Uh, and so, the, like, yeah, My Little Pony just offed a character. And it was pretty dark. And the only character they've done that for is Sombra. 
But even that, that was sort of more implied. This was right out there. And it was amazing. It was great. I'm happy. Like, people are upset that Tempest Shadow got reformed. I'm not. I knew it was going to happen the moment, the moment she showed up on screen. Because I'm fully aware of what this show is and why we're here. I knew it was going to happen. And for what happened, I think it turned out well. You know, maybe we'll get to see a bit more of her. Maybe she'll show up in the rest of the in the series. We can hope. Who knows? So I want to thank you guys for, you know, dealing with all this noise and all this other stuff. And I just needed to get this out there. I am the Brony Critic. Be sure to visit my YouTube channel as well as support me on Patreon for more content. And I'll see you guys next time because every fandom needs a critic.